Hello everyone, welcome to this very interesting lecture. Today we'll be talking about the molecular basis of inheritance. As you know, Mendel laid the cornerstone for one of the most interesting branches of biology, genetics. It was 1856 to 1863 where he propounded his laws and his observation become cornerstone for many more development. But the big question, the Mendelian factors, they were begin to understand as the molecular basis. But what were they? Were they protein? Were they RNA? Were they DNA? That was one question. And it took almost 100 years to come to the conclusion. So we can just take some dateline to understand how it evolved. 1869, Mischner, Friedrich Mischer discovered nuclein from the nucleus, but its molecular nature was not established. By 1900, the work of Mendel was rediscovered. 1902, chromosomal theory of inheritance came into existence, but that also could not throw much light on the molecular nature. It was only by 1926, the molecular quest for finding the molecular nature of genetic material came into existence. But before that, let's have a look at the basic avenues of the uh, chapter molecular base of uh, inheritance. And we'll be talking about every chapter in details. So, uh, this very chapter, after completion of this particular lecture, you'll be able to draw and explain the structure of DNA, explain the chemical composition of DNA, state complementary base pairing rule and solve some problem related to it, difference between DNA and RNA, and explain why the two strands of DNA runs antiparallel. What does it mean? <laughs> Packaging of DNA helix. So, and uh, in the previous chapter, basic understanding of nucleotide that you would have read in class 11th, that will come handy. Arrangement of nucleotide in a DNA, uh, basic details of physical structure of DNA and polarity of strands. How do we measure the polarity? Anyway, I'll be repeating them for your better understanding. This chapter has got certain uh, subcomponents, the DNA, physical and chemical structure, the RNA, then uh, the search for genetic material, a search for genetic material and uh, replication, transcription in, in consonance with the central dogma concept, the genetic code and translation. Then we'll talk about regulation of gene expression and human genome project as such and DNA fingerprinting. Very important chapter as far as CBS exams are concerned. The weightage of uh, the unit number two is too good. And uh, this time evolution has been omitted. So you need to focus hard on this chapter. So DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid, it's a long polymer of deoxyribonucleotide. You must be knowing what's a nucleotide, right? We'll be again talking about it. DNA and RNA are two types of nucleic acid. And we know that the length is expressed as number of nucleotides or base pairs. And as you know, it is species specific. The length of DNA is specific in a given species. There is a table explaining the same virus. Uh, you can see here out the bacteriophage, it has got base pairs 5386 base pair. The bacteriophage lambda has got 48,502 base pairs. E. coli has got 4.6 10 to the power 6 base pair. Human, homo sapien, 3.3 into 10 to the power 9 base pair. That's in the haploid set of chromosomes, right? If you talk about haploid set, means 23 chromosomes. If you talk about the both sets, 2n, then the value will go to 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power 9 chromosomes, right? Uh, we also talk about the DNA and RNA, we'll be talking about the differences, right? As far as the 
nucleotide is concerned, it will have a sugar, right? A uh, base, nitrogenous base, and a phosphate. It makes nucleotide. But if you keep just this two, sugar and base, it will be nucleoside. So you should be able to differentiate between nucleoside and nucleotide. DNA is made up of uh, nucleic acid. So nucleotides are joined into long strands or chains by covalent bond, right? Nucleic acids are long, slightly acidic macromolecules. We talk about it as macromolecules made up of smaller subunit called nucleotides linked together to form long chains. So how they're linked? They make a bond called phosphodiester bond. So nucleotides are made up of three basic components. First, a five carbon sugar. Here in case of DNA, it is deoxyribose sugar. It's a pentose phosphate group, nitrogen spaces, right? There's a three part. You find even a bases are of different types. I'll come to that. This is a pentose sugar and the first carbon, the base is attached and the fifth carbon, it has got a phosphate group. So there are three parts. Clearly you need to remember this. So here it goes. There are pentose sugar, right? You see, in case of RNA, it is ribose sugar, whereas in case of DNA, it is deoxyribose sugar. What does it mean? You see, this is carbon numbering one, two. On the second carbon, in case of RNA, there's O, additional O is present. So OH group is present. You find there's more additional one OH group is present, but in case of DNA, this O is missing. That's why it is called as deoxyribose. Deoxyribose. And hence, this is the sugar which is uh, used or which is found in case of DNA. There are bases. There are two types of bases. Purines. They are double ring structure. Right? Uh, six carbon ring and a five carbon ring. Right? Together. So there are two types of purines. Adenine and guanine and accordingly there are three types of pyrimidine cytosine and thymine whereas this uracil is found exclusively in RNA. So these are the three components uh, as far as the structure of nucleic acid is concerned. How does it appear? Now you see there out in case of DNA and RNA slight differences you see here out just a hydrogen here one OH group right ribose sugar so this is the first difference so there are many difference it differs even in case of uh, bases right adenine thymine guanine and cytosine they are found in dna but in case of rna no thymine is found in case of thymine we have got only uracil right a part of that structural understanding it's a double helical structure DNA whereas RNA is single structure there is a single helix right so structurally also uh, DNA is more stable here out now molecular structure is concerned if you look at it you will find that the backbone is made up of sugar and phosphate you see here sugar phosphate backbone just like stairs the railing of the stair and uh, the bases pair with the complementarity of adenine pairing with thymine with two hydrogen bond, guanine pairing with cytosine with three hydrogen bond, thereby making a complete structure and they are twisted as a helix. So, as I was talking about uh, Frederick Misha in 1869 identified the acidic nature of substance inside nucleus and called it nuclein. So how does it look like? This is nuclide, nucleotide. Nucleotide are joined to another nucleotide using phosphodiester bond, right? Whereas the two strands, two strands in DNA, they are held together with hydrogen bonds. So one end has got fifth carbon unoccupied free, other end has got third carbon unoccupied free. So accordingly, we name it five prime and three prime. On the contrary, the other strand is just anti-parallel. Uh, the end uh, having five prime of one strand has got three prime on other strand and five prime 
at one end. So you find the direction of this trend happens to be five prime to three prime, and the opposite is three prime to five prime. Hence, we call it as anti-parallel. Let's see, what uh, do we name here out? This is the first carbon. So here it should be nitrogen's base. And here a phosphate. Phosphate group. And uh, it can be B, can be purine or pyrimidine. If it is purine, it can be adenine or guanine. If it is pyrimidine, thymine and cytosine, right? A wonderful observation made by Arvind Sharagov. He calculated well that purine pairs with pyrimidine, right? The amount of adenine present in DNA always equal to that of thymine. And that of guanine is equal to that of cytosine. So that's the Sharagov rule. So it can be stated as A is equal to T and G is equal to C, right? So the purines and pyramidins are always equal in number, right? Another study came courtesy Fra Rosalind Franklin and Morris Wilkins, right? Uh, you all can watch this documentary, Secret of Photo 51, a great story about Rosalind Franklin. So they produced extra diffraction pattern of DNA molecule and brought that the structure is helical, double stranded, right? See, this is brought out using X-ray diffraction analysis. So the work of Morris Wilkinson, Rosalind Franklin, and that of Arvind Chargaff. This both work were combined, and uh, uh, Watson and Crick came to the conclusion that DNA. DNA, the genetic material. We'll also establish how it was concluded that DNA is a genetic material. There are beautiful experiments behind that. It all started with Griffith and then went to uh, every McCarthy and McLeod, then uh, Hersey and Chase, right? Before it was declared. But the molecular nature of that DNA was brought out by uh, Watson and Crick. But the work was based on Shargaff's understanding and uh, the work of Morris Wilkins and Rosalind Franklin. This is how the double helical model was proposed. You can look into it. How does it look like? See, it's just like a staircase, right? So the distance between the two railing is around two nanometer. So how does it look like? In 1953, this model was proposed DNA consists of two anti-parallel polynucleotide chain. The sugar phosphate backbone the, is present and the basis projects inward. Adenine binds with thymine with two hydrogen bond and guanine with cytosine with three hydrogen bond. Chains are coiled generally in right-handed fashion. And when this pitch happens to be 3.4 nanometer, right? Or 34 and strong, the distance between two base pairs because in one helix we have what 10 base pair, hence the distance between two base pair is effectively 0.34 nanometer or 3.4 angstrom, right? So this was one conclusion and distance between two strand is around two nanometer. And also we know that uh, the additional stability is provided by stacking of uh, one strand, right? The plane of one base pair stacks over another. You see here, how. so that gives additional stability to the helical structure. And for calculation per se, a one nanometer is equal to 10 to the power minus nine meter and one angstrom is equal to 10 to the power minus 10 meter, right? So this was the basic understanding. And then Francis Crick gave a brilliant concept how the genetic information flows. It flows DNA when there is a cell division. So DNA is replicated, right? and DNA polymer is involved in that. Then DNA is uh, transcribed to RNA. So certain part of information, what is needed, whatever protein has to be formed. So RNA is the one molecule that comes handy and the process called as 
transcription and then that RNA is translated so that the amino acid can be joined and produced into certain structures that's called as uh, translation. So flow of information, DNA to RNA to protein, but there are some exception to it. And you can see here how the exception is retroviruses. The corona is also one now, the retroviruses. HIV is again the retroviruses, right? And the process is called as reverse transcription where retroviruses use their RNA to form DNA. Let us see how DNA and RNA differs. So DNA, as far as sugar is concerned, you find it has got deoxyribose sugar. There's an RNA, there is ribose sugar. As far as base is concerned, DNA has got thymine, RNA has got uracil, right? Rest, the bases, adenine, guanine, and cytosine are present in both the RNA and DNA. Strands, two strands in DNA, one strand in RNA. So this is uh, the more or less like a notes taking version. D DNA, the sugar is deoxyribose, ribose sugar in RNA, presence of additional OH group, right? And base is also uracil is present in RNA, that's the addition. Uracil present in place of thymine, both can replicate. And uh, double stranded, so more stable, single stranded RNA, RNA single strand, so it's less stable. Uh, DNA does not play any catalytic role, but RNA plays catalytic role, so it's somewhat less stable. Now there's a big question. Uh, you talk about the size of nucleus, it's an order of 10 to the power minus 6, but when we talk about the packaging, you should understand the basic mathematics. As we have already described, the distance between two consecutive base pairs is around 0.34 nanometer or 3.4 into uh, 10 to the power minus 10 meter. And there are 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power 9 base pairs. So effectively, if you talk about the length of mammalian DNA, that happens to be around 2.25 meters. Whereas nucleus dimension is 10 to the power minus 6 meter. How is it possible that this amount of DNA is packed inside? How is it possible? So this was beautifully explained by the nucleosome concept in case of eukaryotes. Uh, you will find that chromosomes, when they are in condensed form, so D contains, there is DNA, DNA further coils around, produce nucleosomes, there are another coiling, super coiling, and ultimate coil structure is chromosome, right? So the thickness also goes on increasing how it goes from two nanometer to around 700 nanometer. Let us see first uh, how packaging of DNA takes place in prokaryote. In prokaryote, there is no well-defined nucleus. So uh, it is called as nucleoid. The DNA being negatively charged is held together with some positively charged proteins and forms the region that we know by the name of nucleoid. The, uh, the DNA nucleoid is organized in large loops held by protein. You can see here how these are the large loops, right? And some loop anchor proteins are there. So in case of prokaryote, DNA is not scattered. It is not scattered, right? Rather, it is arranged in the form of loops and held together with some positively charged protein. In eukaryote, the things are much more complicated. How the packaging goes on. You see the two nanometer diameter DNA double helix that goes on wrapping around the stone, right? So you find the nucleosome gets a diameter of around 10 nanometer. And further, there's further supercoiling. So the fiber forms around 30 nanometer diameter, another supercoiling 300 nanometer, and it goes to one chromatid, which is 700 nanometer, right? If you look at this basic beads, that's a nucleosome. So you find here out, this globular structure, it's a nucleosome. It is the core, which is made up of histone protein and histones are the basic proteins, right? Rich in lysine and arginine. They are uh, basic proteins. They are basic amino acids, positively charged, right? And this strand which is running is DNA. So it, it wraps the core uh, one, three by four turn. It's not two turn completely, one, three by four turn. And there are around 200 base pairs, 200 base pairs present in this length. So effectively just like wrapping the uh, thread in a roll. 
and the two nucleosome beads are connected by another histone, H1 histone, right? So you have a look, nucleosome contains 200 base pairs of DNA helix, it makes around one three by four turn, and the histone, this is the histone octamer, there are eight different types of histone H2A, two copies H2B, H3 and H4, right? So chromatin fibers are uh, formed by repeated units of nucleosome. Uh, that's one part, but you should also understand here that there are some non-histone proteins are also required, right? So they're called as NHC, non-histone chromosomal protein required for additional packaging of the uh, nucleic acid. Now you see the regions of chromatin which are loosely packed, they are called as euchromatin and they are transcriptionally active. Whereas the regions of chromatin which are densely packed, they are called as heterochromatin and they are transcriptionally inactive, right? So that is what uh, you get to understand. So let us recapitulate quickly what we have done. The structure of DNA was done after X-ray diffraction image by Rosalind Franklin and uh, Arvind Shargaf. So Watson and Crick understood that DNA is double helical based on these two observations. DNA consists of two polynucleotide strands coiled in a helical fashion with unique base pairing mechanism. Each nucleotide consists of deoxyribose sugar, phosphate, and nitrogenous bases. Nitrogenous bases are of four different types, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine, classified under two categories, purines, the double ring structure, and the pyramid in the single ring structure. Adenine, guanine are purine, whereas thymine and cytosine are pyrene. pyramidine. Adenine always pairs with thymine and guanine with cytosine. As far as uh, bonds are concerned, adenine bonds with thymine with two hydrogen bond and guanine with cytosine with three hydrogen bond. And chromatins are made of nucleosomes in eukaryote and are arranged as loops in case of prokaryote, right? So you can find uh, there are certain questions that comes very handy in uh, both examination. How does the flow of genetic information HIV deviate from central dogma concept? So that comes as an exception. Again, the average length of DNA double helix in a typical mammalian cell is approximately 2.2 meters and the dimension of nucleus is around 10 to the power minus six meter. How is it possible that long DNA polymers are packed within small nucleus? Differentiate between uh, euchromatin and heterochromatin. Mention the role of non-histone chromosomal proteins in packaging. Draw a neat and level diagram of nucleosome and mention what enables histone to acquire positive charge. These are certain uh, questions that are very, very handy. I am very sure that now you are very clear with the structure, the molecular structure of DNA. Now in the next lecture, next topic, we'll be talking about how did scientists reach to that conclusion? There were many brilliant experiments that led to the discovery of the molecular structure. Till then, uh, keep revising and keep asking your questions.